Yeah. It's hard for me. It is. It's not easy in some ways. In some ways, it's downright tough. Sometimes things get really rough, and man, I'm just like you, you know, hey, three strikes and I'm out. <laughs> One, two, three. Wow, where'd that fastball come from? Who threw me a curveball? Man, did you catch that slider? In other words, sometimes life just kind of <laughs> nails you right between the eyes, and you go, huh? What happened? Well, you know, I'd love to be a specimen of perfection, but I don't think I am. <laughs> but we do strive. <coughs> we do seek. We try to be better than we are. We want to look up and see God smile at us. And we think somehow that if we improve ourselves, he's going to love us more. Now, people say, no, I don't believe that. Yeah, you do. No, 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 really, I've been taught better. No, you don't. You believe it. Everybody does it in some way. I mean, you got to admit the part of you that's a little bit carnal, you know, because really there's a big part of you that is carnal. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Better look for the cross. <laughs> yeah. But there's also a part of you that's spiritual, that God is making into incorruptible perfection in his sight. Now, he already sees you as accomplished, and he already sees you as being there, but he wants to use you where you are, as you are, so in order to prepare you, he causes you to seek after and to develop righteousness. You know, righteousness meaning not works of righteousness, which you have done to try to add to your salvation, but rather making the right choice, because that's what righteousness means. It means kind of like going, hmm. Uh. You know, like when everybody's going that away, especially in politics today, you're going that away and seeking first the kingdom of God because you've realized politics just don't make no sense anymore. And it never did. But when you trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning not in your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledging Him and letting Him direct your path, you don't worry about politics. You don't worry about the world. You've got eternity in your eyes. You've got... <laughs> grace in your smile and you've got, guess what, the joy of the Lord in your eyes. So, <coughs> seeking to wanting to better ourselves, because I look at it a different kind of way than maybe you do, but then I never claim to be your normal kind of Christian. I look at it as, you know, sin is good in some ways. It feels good. Sometimes smells good, sometimes looks really good, but those consequences, man, are they a mother? <laughs> or, boy, brother, are they not like fun? Eh, uh, they'll kill you, literally. So, I don't like the consequences of my transgressions, because, you see, transgression is a little different than sin. Sin is sin, but transgression is transgression. That's why we have two different words. Hello? There's a reason why we put these different words in here, you know, it's because it's a different kind of word. <laughs> but a transgression is when you cross over. Kind of like, you see that line right in the middle? Well, if you could walk the line, I walk the line because you're by, you know, you're not Johnny Cash, but when you cross over that line from one side to the other, you transgressed the line. You crossed over. And in some ways, transgressing into heaven would be kind of a nice idea, but it's not quite the same concept. Uh -uh. That's more like repenting towards and turning to heaven. So like when you transgress, you want to repent. Do you get it? Transgress, repent. Left, right. You could go transgress, repent, transgress, repent, transgress, repent, transgress, repent. Every time I transgress, I'm going to repent. Every time I transgress, I'm going to repent. Well, that would be accurate literally, because you need to go from what you were doing towards what you should be doing. That's what we choose to do when we say we want to work righteousness 
out in us or work out our salvation. It's not as though we're trying to make us confident of our salvation because we've been given that assurance. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and this life is in the Son. He who has the Son has life. He is not the Son of God has not life. You got the Son, you got salvation. Do I got the Son? Hmm. Be careful. Working out your salvation is one of those things of going through what we call sanctification. Setting yourself apart. One side or the other. Eh. Meaning that you get rid of the world. You see, if you've still got all the world in your life, I don't really know where your life is, except that maybe it's in the world and maybe when it's time to leave the world behind, you ain't gonna. <laughs> Duh. So, rather than be a Lot's wife and look back on the world and maybe get left behind for a rapture or turn to pillar of salt if it seems to be a judgment time, maybe you need to get those things out of your life that aren't part of your eternal life <coughs> because you've forgotten what real life is all about. And it's not the world and its ways. You may have accumulated lots of goods on this side, you know, and said, hey, I got a lot of goodies. God says, uh, they're baddies. Well, me, I don't like the consequences of having all this junk in my trunk, you know. I like to get all that junk out of my trunk so that I get better gas mileage, you know, so that when I'm reading the Word, I get a little better gas mileage, you know, a little further down the road than I do when I've got all that junk stuff boys, toys, man cave, Harleys, and all this other worldly goods, you know, all in the way when I want to be seeking to follow the Lord in a simple way. Now, maybe you got a lot of stuff. I don't know. It's up to you. You figure it out. If it's not in your way, okay. I leave it alone. But you can decide for yourself, just like we do in Tozer teaching, what works best for you in working out your salvation with fear and trembling. For we know that we shall all give an accountability to God for the things that we've done in the flesh. For me, I don't want no junk in my trunk. Matter of fact, I want to be a lean, mean, green machine, so to speak. I want to have life and that more abundantly. Meaning, fruits of the spirit as opposed to works of the flesh. It's up to you. You get to decide. But I think maybe you ought to ask the Spirit of God to change you and rearrange your life into the kind of life He would have for you to be. The kind of person He wants you and I to be. Because one thing I'll tell you, man, I am not a perfect Christian. So I'm always trying to get away from the consequences of my actions. Because I still have to suffer. I reap what I sow. But you know, I would rather move on with God than move back into the world. <coughs> Unchanging the love and compassion of Jesus but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Philippians 2.7 Because change is everywhere around us, at all times on this earth and among human beings, it is difficult for us to grasp the eternal and unchanging nature of the person of Jesus. Nothing about our Lord Jesus Christ has changed down to this very hour. His love has not changed. His compassion his compassionate understanding of us has not changed. His interest in us and his purpose for us have not changed. They are the same today, yesterday, and forever. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. He is the very same Jesus, even though he has been raised from the dead and seated at the right hand of the majesty in the heavens and made head over all things to the church. His love for us remains unchanged. It is hard for us to accept the majestic simplicity of this constant wonder-working Jesus. It's hard to believe Jesus in us. 
We are used to getting things changed so that they are always bigger and better. We want more and more, and the more we get, the more we want, the more we want, the more we get. Until we figure out it wasn't really what we wanted after all, with all that junk in our trunk. <coughs> you can only eat so much apple pie, and guess what? You'll see it accumulate somewhere. He is Jesus, easier to approach than the humblest friend you ever had. He is the sun that shines upon us. He is the star of our night. He is the giver of our life and the rock of our hope. He is our safety and our future. He is our righteousness. He is our sanctification. He is our inheritance. You will find that he is all of this in that instant that you move your heart towards him in faith. This is the journey to Jesus that we have made in the depths of the heart and being. This is a journey where feet do not count and the accumulation of goods is left far behind. You can have the whole world. You can inherit all the promises of God and move into the wealth and riches that you see sometimes. Some of these Christians doing all these wealthy, rich kind of things and getting away with what appears to be a very prosperous life. You could be into that kind of prosperity doctrine and prosperous things. Or you could give me Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but I've looked at some of these prosperity people. I've listened to them talk. This is probably one of the few times that I'm really going to sin in front of a camera. <laughs> By my own words. Or is it? I've heard their words, I've seen their actions, and I've thought, hey, you know, you want to come with me? I'll show you Jesus. Because I think I got more of him than you do. I think he has been kind of like doing some things you may not have thought of. And I'm happy you got all this, you know, marvelous thousands of billions of dollars in jets and, you know, churches and evangelists and all these different ministry kind of things that you do in all your rich attire. Can I show you Jesus? Can I take you down the street and oh, let you see my God and my Lord? Ooh, can I take you and maybe we could both kind of like, you know, go heaven tripping, you know, and go check out the heavenly scene for a while? Ooh, maybe you're missing out on something that you haven't experienced yet because you're so much junk in your trunk. You're so worldly you don't know what heaven looks like anymore. Do you want Jesus? Do you want more of God in your life? Do you want to take out all that stuff you put in the cup of your salvation? You know, like all that pouring in, all that extra junk, you know, like goodies and, and Harleys and, you know, motorcycles and guitars, you know, and all this extra worldly junk. And are you willing to like pour it out and lay it at the feet of the cross? Are you willing to lay down that part of your life for God? Do you still watch television consistently over and over again, programming your mind so that you could be like the world? Do you listen to talk radio so that you could be like the world and be just like the shock jock? Do you consistently and obsistently constantly be in the world with part of the world and become like the world. You know, pattern yourself after the world in its ways. Are you politically oriented so that you'll be like a politician? I want Jesus. I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to be worldly. I don't want to be carnal. I don't want to have the things of the world. I want to have the things of God. I want to be like Jesus. I want to follow God's only Son Even if I'm the only one I want to hear when I'm done You did well, my son I want to follow Jesus Christ Yes, I'm willing to sacrifice I want to follow Him for rise All the days of my life I want to follow God's only Son 
Even if I'm the only one I want to hear when I'm done, you did well, my son.